Hello students, I am Professor Shita Jagod, Department of Mechanical Engineering, Sister Krati Bar. So today we are discussing subject Renewal Energy Technology, subject code ME604C, 6th semester. Unit 1, Topic 2, Solar Power Plants, Renewal Source of Energy for Future. In previous topic, we have discussed about the basics of solar energy. In this topic, we will discuss about the basics of solar power plants and different types of solar, solar power plants. So first of all, we will uh, learn the basics of solar power plant. What actually happens in solar power plants? So here we are discussing Heliothermal is the process of conversion of solar energy to thermal energy. In solar power plant, the heliothermal, heliothermal process takes place, which converts solar energy into thermal energy. Solar thermal energy can be used directly for heating purpose, for domestic water heater, for cooking purpose, and for steam generation purpose in solar power plants. In terms of large-scale electric utility power generation, solar energy can be utilized to heat a fluid and eventually produce steam. In all the solar power plants, what it will do, will take the heat from the sun and then that will give that heat to the, to the particular fluid and will convert that fluid into the steam and that, it, that convert that particular fluid into the steam. And then and then hit that steam to the turbine to, to the conventional turbine, and then after injecting to the turbine, the turbine is coupled to the generator, and then only finally convert that mechanical energy into the electrical energy, which we will we can see in this diagram that here we are concentrating all the solar energy on a tower, and then only giving all the radiations from a particular point over here. Here, the fluid is moving inside this tower. The fluid is taking heat from this sun and then it is transferring heat and then it is converting fluid into the steam. That is steam is going to the turbine. Here, the turbine is rotating and generator is coupled to the turbine and then converting the mechanical energy into the electrical energy and then again after taking heat from the fluid by the condenser again going to, to the same path and taking heat so this process takes place continuously now what is solar thermal system if we we'll talk about the solar thermal system so solar thermal systems are of two types the first one is passive thermal system and the second one is active thermal system what we can see in passive thermal system, a passive system requires no equipment, means there is no requirement of any equipment in the system. Like when heat builds up inside your car, when it's left path in the sun. An active system requires some way of absorbed and collected solar radiations. <coughs> active thermal system. In this system, it requires some ways of to store and collect energy. Solar thermal power plants are active systems, mirrors, reflectors and concentrate sunlight and receivers collect and concentrate sunlight and receiver collect that solar energy and convert it into the heat energy. What we can see in this diagram, this is the passive solar system. What we are doing, we are not using any equipment to, uh, to store the sun energy. While in this active system, we are using pumps, we are using heat exchanger, we are using solar panel and all. So it is clear from this diagram that in passive thermal system, we don't require any equipment. While in solar system, solar active solar system, we require different equipments. Now, in this slide, we'll discuss about the classifications of solar power plant. How solar power plants are classified. If we'll see this diagram, then only it is very clear from this diagram that solar collectors are classified as concentrating type and non-concentrating type. If we'll talk about the concentrating type, the concentrating type are also divided into 
two types, focus type and non-focus type. If we'll talk about the focus type, then focus type are also divided into two parts. The first one is line focus, one axis tracking system, that is cylindrical parabolic concentrator, fixed mirror. And the second part of this focus type is point focus, two axis tracking system. It consists of paraboidal dish collector, hemispherical bowel mirror contents, circular and central tower receiver. Now, if we we'll talk about the non-focus type, then it is modified flat plate collector, compound parabolic concentrate. The, now, we we'll talk about the non-concentrating type. The non-concentrating type consists of flat plate collector, liquid flat plate collector and flat plate air heating collector. So, these are the classifications of solar collectors. Now, we will discuss about The flat plate collector which is you can see in this diagram the flat plate collector is a device which consists of a case it is over here its insulator insulations is there here we have done the insulation it has two ports one inlet port and the second one is the outlet port and this these are the fluid channel through which the fluid flows and here this shows by the absorber if we we'll talk about the upper surface of this so upper surface is covered with the glass which we can see over here there are two types of radiations are coming the first one is diffuse type and the direct type both radiations are concentrating on the glass now we'll discuss about the few points related to flat plate collector in flat plate collector Flat plate collectors are the more commonly used type of collectors today. The second is they are array of solar panels arranged in a simple plane. They use both beam and diffuse radiations of the sun as we have seen. We, they are using both type of radiations. They can be of nearly any size and have an output that is directly related to the few variables including size. Facing cleanliness, flat plate collectors are in wide use for domestic as well as for different purposes. The absorber is usually a sheet of high thermal conductivity matter, which we can see over here. The next is concentrating solar power system. It is of three types, parabolic type, central receiver system and distilling system. Here what is heliostates? Heliostates which are mirrors that focus sunlight at a single point as shown in figure. There are several mirrors in heliostates and they concentrate light on a single receiver. And the second is parabolic reflector which redirects sunlight to a single or multiple point which we can see in B and C. Parabolic trough collector, it's a diagram of parabolic trough collector. Here we can see there is a parabolic trough over here. The sun is concentrating over here. It is now we can see in the ray diagram. The ray diagram shows it is going to the reheater, the fluids. Then after it is giving heat to the another fluid. Coming down in the superheater, transferring the heat. And then a steam generator. Again this heat is, steam is going to the turbine and <clears throat> with, then after it is going to the condenser then again feed water expansion so this is this process continues like this so we'll discuss about the few points related to parabolic trough collector a PTC is a line focus system in that a long mirror concentrator in the shape of parabolic trough it is directed to heat the fluid within a conductor located on the focal line of the trough. The level of concentration within the PTC is less than that of power tower, resulting in lower peak temperature. PTC are typically aligned with the focal line along the north-south axis. 
Here we can see the tube which is in time the, inside the PTC. It, it is a metallic tube inside the glass shell. Between glass shell and metallic tube, there is a vacuum and this is the expansion valve. The horizontal north-south row generally collects slightly more energy. Normally, we will consider north-south row in comparison of east-west, although the east-west orientation typically provide more constant annual output. If we will talk about the annually, then east-west will be preferable. Single axis tracking is sufficient for PTC. The receiver tube in the PTC is constructed using two concentrated tubes, which I have shown over here. The inner metallic tube which transport the working fluid is separated from the outer transmitted tube via vacuum. So the glass one is outer tube and the metallic one is the inner and it is a vacuum. So it so they are separated by vacuum. This is central receiver system. We can see the heliostates field is there, a central receiver is here, here is a cold salt storage tank. So here what we can do, what we are doing, we are sending water to this tower, all the radiations are concentrated on this tower, when the fluid goes through this tower, it takes heat from this tower and then after taking heat, hot salt storage tank, then it goes through this, here it transfer heat to the another fluid, by taking the heat from this hot salt this fluid convert into the steam and then we'll inject this steam to a turbine and then only convert it is attached to the generator and then convert it to electricity and then again the waste is come to the condenser and with the help of feed water again it goes in the same path so we are following the same process in central receiver system Central receiver systems employ the large field of mirror known as heliostate, which I have told. Heliostates are individually oriented, redirect sunlight toward the top of the power tower. The heat transfer medium of the thermal power cycle may be pumped to the top of the central receiver or mirror can be located at the top of the tower to reflect the light. The heat transfer fluid, typically a molten salt mixture, is circulated to the transport received heat to the secondary fluid such as water. A representative molten salt is a mixture of 40% potassium nitrate and 60% of sodium nitrate. Aliostates are significant component because it is 45% of the total cost of the plant. Now we'll talk about the advantages. Solar power plant is pollution free. It reduces dependency on the foreign oil, renewal and clean power, return of investment unlike paying for utility bills. It requires virtually no maintenance. It creates jobs. Access power can be sold back. It can be installed virtually anywhere. Use batteries to store extra power. Solar can be used to heat water and other things safer than traditional electric current. Disadvantage is high initial cost which I have told earlier. It needs lots of space and efficiency is not 100%. No solar power at the night. It is the, another disadvantage. Device that run on DC power direct are more expensive. Depending on ge geographical location another disadvantage of this Cloud days do not produce as much as energy. Solar panels are not being mass production due to lack of material and technology. Solar powered car do not have the same speed. And the last one is lower solar production in the winter month. So these all are the disadvantages of solar power. Thank you very much.